we're going to be talking about empowerment, political empowerment, and uh, numbers that you're not going to believe. Uh, uh, some of our presenters have, uh, all of our presenters have uh, great experience dealing in these kinds of issues. And one of them in particular is going to be living pretty soon, so I'm going to let her speak first. She's already here. Conchi Bretos is uh, with us. Uh, she has been, uh, she has enormous experience in community empowerment. And when I asked her, well, how does that relate to political empowerment? She said, hay que movernos. Y yo soy mover gente. We know how to move people. And that's exactly what we need. It's exactly what we need at this time. Let me introduce to you uh, some of our participants in this part of the program. Mark Hugo Lopez, Dr. Mark Hugo Lopez. He's Associate Director of the Pew Hispanic Center. Mark is right here. He is the author of some of the most incredible statistics that you have seen uh, coming from the uh, Pew Hispanic Center. And also Andres Ramirez, President of the Ramirez Group, somebody who is very well respected everywhere in where, where uh, Latinos do politics because of his experience and because of his analysis and his views on how to empower Latinos. But since Concepcion Bretos uh, is uh, about to leave us because she has to go to the airport, I'm gonna let Concepcion speak first and then we're gonna, we're gonna miss her. And then we're gonna take the, the issue with the two gentlemen. But Conchi, it's all yours. Thank you very much, and I want to say first thank you to Janita and Nakoa. They have always made me feel so special, so thank you for inviting me here. Uh, I, I, I'm here, and I've listened for two days uh, what has been spoken here, and I'm sure that you're sick and tired uh, of listening. Uh, it gets to a point where you don't want to hear anymore. I'm here to call you for action. We've heard about the issues. We're going to hear about the statistics, which are really alarming, uh, alarmingly good. And, and so I want to say, OK, what do we do with that? I believe in this world there are three kinds of people. One, those who wonder what happened, those who let it happen, and those who make it happen. Hispanics make it happen. And you just have to look at some of the statistics that are going to be presented to you. 81% of the registered voters in Florida, my state of Florida, Hispanic voters registered, 81% voted in the 2008 election. Incredible. So we do go out and vote. Now, do we vote for the right person? <laughs> that is the issue. In 1993, I ran for office in Miami-Dade County. I was the only Hispanic in a Hispanic district. My opponent was an uh, American Jew. 18% of the people registered to vote in that district actually voted. And three of them were my children. So what happened? Bad officials are voted into power by good people who stayed home. And I think that has to be the lesson for us. We have to go out and vote. We have to have our words heard. Um, as a community organizer, I know the power of mobilizing individuals, uh, ordinary people, to, to do something. Uh, like I said yesterday, for eight years, I actually came here to lobby both the Department of Health and the Department of Housing to talk to each other, to work together a partnership so that individuals like most of us, like my mother, can live in their homes with services and die there. Ten years of coming and begging and becoming a troublemaker, because that's what I am. I am a troublemaker. But I have, I have done very well. This year, in February of 2011, they finally contracted with each other and put together $40 billion. 
with the B for community care. But I didn't do this alone. I never act alone. Never, never. I mobilized a lot of people whose parents live in public housing who are low income. I mobilized them. President Wilson said something very important. They said that the, the, the fault with the American character is that there are very few kickers and growlers, very few troublemakers like Concepcion. And and I think that it is important, especially for our community, we are very concerned about demanding things. While that, what Congressman De Serra said, I am here to do your work. But well, we have to demand that. We have to have that attitude. We cannot feel um, ashamed of demanding things. We talked a lot in Miami about the issues. We talked ad nauseum about the issue. But what are you going to do with them? We, we know that there's less and less housing. We know that there are less and less community services. What are you going to do with it? You have to let your voices heard. You have authenticity. We are the face of America today. They cannot ignore us anymore. And so my, my request today is seize the moment. And Janita, you talked about the moment, and you repeated several times. This is our moment. You have to seize it, fly with it, expand it. One thing that we have to do that we haven't done, and it's so, so important, and especially for you, you are another troublemaker, right? You have to, you have to marry the work that we do in our community with advocacy. It cannot go in separate ways. The people who, who create bills, who get elected, and the people who actually do community work, who understand what the issues are, we have to mesh them together. And when you do that, it will be multiplied a thousand times. So it's no longer that, oh, I am a community leader. I am a community leader, but I come here and I raise help because I know what my people need. So it has to be done. You have to blend them together. You have to be one track engagement. One, if you can remember anything of today and yesterday, one track engagement. So I call on you, your energy, your passion, your voice. Let it be heard. Become a troublemaker. Kick and growl. And thank you very much. Thank you, Bretas. Thank you so much. Thank you.